I am Mahatma Gandhi. Welcome, Mahatma. Thank you. I'm recording, so you're, uh, it's intended to be published. That is all right. Uh, I will not speak out of turn, and I will only give you information that can be published. I can cut out different stuff. So it's nice to meet you. I'll just listen to your audio book and autobiography, and I felt very charmed by it. What was the charming part? Oh, the childish part of you. It was very much like a child all life. Innocence is the most powerful of all the gifts given to humans. And so to be joyful and childish is a great power. Uh-huh. I, uh, uh, I, I wonder about your sexuality. Um, you seem like to make a very romantic connections to many, many, many people, including lots of men. Yes. Oh, uh, did you feel bisexual? I would not label it. I would just say that within man, there is both male and female sexuality. Uh -huh. and my attraction to each on their own levels was because of who they are and not of what sex they were. But uh -huh. the, to become involved with them sexually was definitely easy because I was in love with the person and not with the gender. All right. Uh huh. And how was your wife? Uh, uh, was she like uh, friendly? Master Bob. She was a shy woman. Uh huh. She did not like all the attention necessarily. She did like the benefits of my position, but she was not one for the spotlight. I uh -huh. loved her very much because she was pure in her thought processes and was good about all the things that were me. She understood who I was and could accept that very easily because I have been that way all my life. Um, how different were you from other people? You are very different, looking different, behaving different, and spiritually different, right? In many ways. Once you've taken on a different approach to life, a different philosophy, it can change the way you look because uh -huh. people look at you differently. And when you have certain attributes, they look at you in a different way than maybe they would have looked at me if I were a, just a regular politician. Uh-huh. Do you feel like you have been uh, an alien or did you feel like an alien? I did feel a disconnect from this world of yours and mine at some times because what I accepted in the truest form of all things, the world could not accept. Right. Yeah, your outlook at the world was very, uh, very alien. Like, I feel very much aligned to you. Like, I'm looking at the people and it doesn't make any sense. So you, like, you were very kind to children. You uh, was uh, very worried about making things clean and uh, rational. And the world was irrational around you. So that it looked like you were very much like an alien, like an extraterrestrial. Although I did feel that way, I never had real alien encounters. Uh -huh. I felt that some of the people that I was encountering were aliens, but they showed themselves in human form. But I did meet some people that I thought were very alien in their thought processes. Now, the most alien thing about me is that I refused to be like humans. Uh huh. I think because I refuse to be a human in the very thought of what a human would do in most circumstances, 
Then I became very alien to many people. Uh huh. They actually questioned my thought processes, thinking that I must be delusional, thinking that my way of doing things could not possibly work, and that I would surely fail. I, I read a book, another book about you, which was a very interesting biography comparison of you and Churchill. Uh, there was some connection between you and Churchill and some mysterious connection and some uh, synchronicities which happened to both of you. Did you have a, a relationship with Churchill, with Winston Churchill? Not a deep one. Uh huh. We did meet. But I mean, did you have a spiritual connection? Did you feel... Uh, I did like feel a your... closeness. I felt a closeness to him because of, A, he cared about his people as I did. And he wanted to be of assistance to the world as I did. And he looked at the world as a different place, just like I did. But we had different view, uh, views of the world, even though they were differing from the way the world would see themselves. Um, but we did share the fact that we, wa we were very helpful deep inside. We wanted the best of all things for everyone. I think at some point there was a, a, a standoff, a, a, a disagreement between uh, you and Churchill, and both of you became sick and were near death at the same time. And then when it came out, the disagreement was somehow resolved. I think Churchill gave in. What was that? That was something personal. It was uh -huh. about our connection as human beings as well as our spiritual connection as well. We did spiritually connect. We did physically connect in some ways. And so the the transference of how we felt toward one another was very, very strong, but it could not be what the earth would see it as. So we could not uh, possibly move forward without uh, getting rid of this, uh, well, I wouldn't say getting rid of, I would say, um, taking the responsibility to move forward in, a, in the way that we did. Uh-huh. I, I read the book, uh, like, uh, as I mentioned, the Churchill and uh, the comparison of you and Churchill. And this book was very detailed and very interesting, but it um, refused to look at your connection to God. Basically, it didn't take anything... Uh, spiritual into account at all and from that perspective your life was uh, a series of failures and uh, everything that happened happened not because of your efforts but uh, but independently of your efforts correct <laughs> but the thing is the, all those things had to happen in order for the final success all right right I so, not regret any of them for all the decisions that I made were out of love and compassion, truth and innocence, and for the betterment of humanity. So did you have uh, the, uh, some, some spiritual uh, experiences where you would like have direct connection to the spirits and to God? Did you have any of that? Did you get any proof during your lifetime? Oh, absolutely. I felt very strongly about spirit. They refused to write about spirit because they didn't know how to write about spirit. I uh -huh. could, they could not know how I felt, and I did not always express my spiritual beliefs, and I did not always express how I was feeling spiritually. Mm -hmm. So they refused to take that into account, I'm sure, because they were confused about it. And that it figured that it, if spirit was involved, everything would have been successful. And that is not necessarily true. 
I understand that. Uh, I wanted to find out if you had like physically experiences where you would see some some clearly clear proof that uh, the spirituality is real, that the spirits are real. Did you meet God? Did you meet any of the of the um, deities? I I could feel the spirit. I uh -huh. knew the spirit was there through the innocence that I shown, through the joy that I showed in my life, as you are aware of. Without spirituality, there would be no joy. And so therefore, yes, I felt great spirituality and great joy. Uh, I know you also were a good healer. Uh, can you talk a little bit about that? What would you like to know? Um, I guess any advice from your experience? Healing is part of your natural gifts. Every human on the face of the earth has the gift of healing in some degree. If you practice it, if you believe in it, if you want it to work, it works much better than if you ignore it. And so therefore, having used my healing energies more than in public, but in private as well, it became part of who I was because healing is natural to me and healing is natural to many, many humans. And I could feel that energy through spirit that there was healing energy in my hands, in my forehead, in my heart. So therefore, yes, I did use it. And sometimes I used it through my eyes because that was the only way that I could do it without being uh, spotted or people knowing that uh, what I was doing. But I was trying to help through my forehead, heart, and eyes many times doing some healing in areas where people would not even realize that I knew healing was needed. Nice. Um, so you were experimenting with, uh, with a diet and trying to make purely vegetarian diet even without milk. I mean, basically you failed. You couldn't, you couldn't exist without milk. And you were always looking for a substitute, a vegetarian substitute for milk, which would be adequate. Do you think it was a good uh, way of doing it? Like um, from now, from a new perspective, which you have now, is there any, is there any substitute for milk? I mean, do you have to have, do, do we have to have um, animal products in our diet? We were, we were uh, raised, let me say it this way. I would not change a thing about what I did before. I would have tried to uh, substitute milk no matter what. And I still would if I came back. But let me tell you this. We are humans and we are born into a, a way of life that does include meat and dairy and all these things. And I did try to get rid of some of that. But realizing that God was saying to me that this was not hurting anyone, that milk products were fine for me, I understood that I needed it like I needed God's nourishment because God was giving me a lesson through it. Um, now when you're in the spirit world, um, how do you see God? Did you meet Ram? You were very fond of Ram. How does Ram look? What is uh, the essence of Ram? Let's tell, let me tell you that God has many facets and many uh -huh. names. And when you meet one facet of God, you're just as amazed that when you meet the, as when you meet the next facet. Allah uh -huh. or Krishna or whoever, Jah. You will meet all the different facets of God that has ever been. And you, they go on and on because they go to other societies and uh, alien societies and planets. And you're, it's fascinating to know them as they are in that place, in that, in that thought process. And you call them by that name and they give you that personality and you learn about that personality and the deity thereof 
and you are a little bit closer to understanding the totality of God because um, God is so many, has so many facets. You can never learn them all and never know them all. It will take an infinity to know them all. But you learn who he is and how amazing he is through his different personalities that he has shown. So are you still very much aligned with Ram or did you have, uh, do you have more of preferences at the moment? I am still with all the deities that I choose. They are all one God in many forms. I see. Um, I also uh, recently spoke with Channel Lucifer, and um, it sort of uh, connects me to my uh, youth where I was reading a book about Lucifer. Um, can, can you comment what it is, who it is, and how important it is? Lucifer is an alter ego of God in some ways. He is somewhere, someone put out there to magnify negativity so that positivity will be appreciated in a greater way. You see, without that, without someone playing the negative card, you will not really enjoy your positivity as much. But once you realize that positivity is here and that it is the greater of the ways, the negativity becomes secondary. And so Lucifer, although he is a headstrong and um, conceited sort of individual, by intent, of course, you will find that he is also a great humanitarian in the sense that he is trying to show mankind what true joy really is. I um, do I think uh, Shiva and Lucifer are the same thing, or are they somehow connected? Oh, they can be connected, but they they are not the same thing, because Shiva, well. Shiva is a, a negative aspect, but he is not the negative aspect, not in his culture, necessarily. But he does bring around uh, good things as well. Didn't you notice that? Yeah. The Satan that you believe in, or that the cultures believe in, bring about no good whatsoever. Ah. Okay, so uh, what about negativity in your life? Um, you have to deal with negative things, and to deal with negative things, you have to be strong. How did you uh, deal with your own negativity and the necessity to be sharp at some point and, and uh, cause harm? Negativity is something that you use positivity to deal with it. The innocence and the childlike innocence that I had dealt with the negativity better than any of adult thought processes could. And so therefore the innocence would do that which is innocent to deal with the negativity and move through it much quicker. Now you, you may say, but that was a failure. That didn't work. But it did. The negativity was gone after the failure. I did not have to prove myself after that. The, the negativity was gone, and I just had to deal with the next problem. You were a teacher of kids and, of, uh, and always had a lot of uh, people in your ashram and your settlements, and you were like responsible for many things. So, so you have to be rigid in many ways. And you were actually exceptionally rigid in uh, questions of... Uh, of many things like diet and uh, timing and speaking, your vows were like um, very strict. So there was, you had to do a lot of hurt to people. How did you feel about that and how did you deal with this? Being strict and hurting people are two different things. 
being uh -huh. strict is to say that you must follow these rules and they have a meaning and they and they are i've put them in uh, this strict order for a reason and if they disobeyed these things of course they would be punished as anyone would be if they disagreed their parents or or those in authority you cannot deny that uh, there is authority on the earth and then there are those that refuse to follow it sometimes and so they must pay for their crimes or in their indiscretions now the reason they must be on time is so they do not miss anything that is meant for them in the positivity portion of their lives and so if they choose to miss out then they are punished more than one way with the lack of their understanding of what they could have done right and the lack of um, the structure that they needed to live their lives within. So then, therefore, being strict was not trying to hurt people, but was trying to give them a guideline for a better life, for being responsible and disciplined, and also for um, a healthier life, the diets and things of that nature that would keep them from uh, overeating and from being um, uh, negative in that way. So, yes, there were some strict things, and I did have some strict uh, rules, but within those guidelines, I was still very joyous and still very happy. And those that disagreed uh, or were outside those disciplinary guidelines were not happy. If you were within them, you were very happy and joyful. Uh huh. Um, one of the biggest blames of historians um, of India towards your behavior was that when British were offering uh, you to transfer the power to Indians, you um, you refused it. So instead of transfer of the power, it was complete chaos and destruction of all the systems, and then. Um, thousands or even maybe millions of people were hurt in the violence. So your non-violent resistance and refusal to accept the transfer of the power lead, led to, to violence and, and destruction. Uh, and then the, everything had to be rebuilt from scratch. Um, what can you answer to that? My, my answer to that is this. What they wanted to do and how they wanted to do it was not right. How can I do something, uh, how can I accept something that I know that was wrong and then, uh, and then have peace about it? You see, even though it caused a lot of death and destruction, that was not because of me. That was because there were those that disagreed and they fought against it. And so they had their own opinions, they had their own reasonings, for why they did what they did, but I had to be within my belief systems. I could not go outside of it just to stop that. And I did not know that that was going to happen anyway. So it was an outcome that I did not foresee because my thoughts were very peaceful about the whole thing. But obviously, they did not want to keep a peaceful outlook on that they wanted what they wanted, and they did what they wanted to do. Right. Um, another question I had was, uh, you were very healthy, uh, the whole life actually, you were pretty healthy, but you were exceptionally healthy until you became popular. And once you became popular, you started uh, having sicknesses once in a while. And I wonder if it is a necessary thing to be sick when you uh, deal with other people and are responsible for other people. It and is. And also, also uh, maybe a lot of things you did when you uh, took suffering voluntarily, like uh, in a voluntary fashion, you took on yourself extra, extra limitations and suffering and uh, abstinence from food. 
Uh, did you this way uh, clear up the karma of people who lived with you? How, how does it work? Well, you see, I saw that as I became someone of notoriety, that their karma would come to me and that I would have to deal with many different uh, people and karmas that I did not have to deal with before. Though, therefore, I did have some protection from God and my spirituality, but I prayed that if I would do certain things to give God a greater glory, such as uh, stop eating and fast for a while, or pray for a great deal of time, that these things would not come upon me in such great weights. What I mean by that is some of these people's uh, uh, weighed me down. Their, their thought processes, their life stories, the way that the things were happening around the country were beginning to weigh on me. So I was trying to make it so that it was not so um, much effort on me spiritually. I see. So um, I, I'm, I'm dealing with the sicknesses right now. I'm big part of my time. I'm sick and, and uh, there are like some disorders. And I, I wonder why it happens and how can I get healthier? Many times, if you find that you are in sickness, there are reasons for it. There are karmic reasons sometimes, and there are reasons of guilt sometimes. And perhaps there is karma around you that is not good, and you are taking it on just to get rid of it. Perhaps your wife or child or someone is very negative or upset all the time, you may take on their karma and so become ill uh, trying to deal with it in a way that you feel is correct. Now, sometimes you do not know how to deal with this karma correctly, and so it just gets you down. And so what happens is you have to pray for forgiveness and pray that this karma be lifted from you and be given a way and so that you may accept what the truth is for your life. Uh -huh, thank you. Um, uh, another question I had um, there, um, I just <laughs> was funny how uh, <laughs> uh, darshan is, uh, is a thing uh, where um, mm, people come to you and ask for, for a blessing, basically. And when you became popular, it would be like many <laughs> thousands of people would want to meet and you uh, receive blessings for you. And for you, it was a distraction from productive activity which you could do. And it was a, a funny for me a realization that, you know, uh, you know, some of the gurus, sadhus, saint, saints in... Uh, in India and everywhere, like they, they suffer. I mean, they do that whole life. They have to receive people and bless them. And it is a hard work. So well, far, it, go ahead. It is, it is because although some of them come for truly the right reasons to be, have a blessing and to be lifted out of whatever uh, spiritual dilemma that they are having, there are those also that are coming just for the look of it. They're coming just to say, look at me, I'm going to get a blessing. And they, once they get it, all they do is tell everybody about it. And it's really not a spiritual thing. It's more of a, a mark of uh, uh, society that they have come up in the world, that they have seen someone famous, that they have touch someone's spiritual, so look at me, look at me. So um, if it's not sincere, which about, about a third of it isn't, it makes it very difficult for me to want to go through and do blessings on all these people because some of them are just there so they can go and brag about it. Mm -hmm. 
and that is not my way. That is not what I would wish for them. And that is not a true blessing. That I will give a true blessing to them and they will use it as a tag of popularity. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I feel like I want to deliver my uh, message to people. I want to be heard by more people. And I want to be healing and giving advice. But again, I was, I have a little bit of experience of being popular and, and sometimes, often it is overwhelming. Especially it is overwhelming in a way it is clogging your communication system. You cannot really uh, separate things that which are essential from things which are not related to you. I think your, 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 your communication system also was very polluted. You received like... Absolutely. Daily, hundreds of messages. Absolutely. Letters. Um, that was absolutely correct. It was polluted with those that wished to just clog up the system. They had no real meaning. Uh, they had no real sense of urgency about what they were doing. They were just doing it for the sake of uh, a response. Mm -hmm. They were what kind of response they could get and it and they would uh judge it but like, let me tell you about yourself oh thank you i see that the reason why your popularity isn't greater is because it is a cultural difference people do not understand you sometimes and the way you do things because it comes from a different place than where they are used to. You have a different thought process than those that are American. And, and they see that you have a different uh, kind of way. And so if your way and thought process does not match their processes, then sometimes they can become critical. But I see that you are trying to overcome that in many ways. You, it, you have evolved and matured and have still a little ways to go, but there will come a time when you are someone of notoriety. But let me tell you this. Hopefully they will listen to this thing that I say about you, for it will help them to understand you better and know that you are coming from a place of the heart, from a place of love, from a place of understanding, and not a place of a dictatorship or, or control. Although sometimes it, they say that about you, that you're controlling, you feel that you have to, to keep things structured, just like I did. I see that you and I have the same uh, kind of uh, people around us that didn't understand us exactly the way that uh, we were meant to be understood, but yet eventually it will come out that we are who we are. And the facts will be the facts. And so do not worry, continue to evolve, uh, love unconditionally as much as possible. That is so hard for human beings. I had a hard time with it. And it actually did not conquer that completely but got close at times. <laughs> I have to laugh because getting close at times is actually the best I could do. Mm -hmm. but see that you suffer with the same thing. Um, I just wanted to comment that uh, I don't feel understood not only by, by Americans, but by any, any groups of people. Like, it's really hard to find my, my group of people. Like, Neither Russians, nor scientists, nor uh, any religious or spiritual group or uh, Jews or there is no groups which would uh, align very well. There are some individuals sometimes, but it's rare to find someone who understands you and at the same time forgives you. I guess Jim is one of those. <laughs> I, am, I am not understanding what you said. What? Oh. I'm, I'm just saying that Russians don't understand me either. Oh, they don't understand you? I would think that the Russians might understand you a little better. 
Right. You know, and some people do understand you, but they don't forgive you for that. <laughs> ah, that is the other thing. I was not forgiven by many as well. Not for, not until they passed on. But because I, they thought that I was the reason for all this destruction and pain and death. And they blamed me and they had to blame someone, I guess. And so it was me. And I took that, and that was another reason for the illness, is because I did accept their blame to some extent. I did accept some of their blame because I did feel responsible after the fact. Even though I did what I did because I thought I was right, after the fact I saw all the death and destruction and had to take some blame for that. And so that caused some illnesses. Right. I just want to comment about myself that I still want to help people, to teach people, to solve their problems and to, to heal and to be a healer. So I'm not opposed to being contacted. No, no, not at all. I just need to learn how to face the overwhelming number of messages and the number of people to which want to uh, connect. On the other hand, there is a, there are people who I need to connect and they're also overwhelmed. So there is a, a, the opposite thing. I'm not famous enough to connect to David Wilcock and uh, uh, Stuart Hammer, although I need, I, I, I know they need me, but, but we, I wasn't able to connect. Perhaps one day, Things happen in their own time for their own reasons. As I learned, as I came to the Oversoul, I saw what, what connections were lacking and what connections were made when they were needed. That my connection with Churchill is a good, uh, a good uh, reasoning of that. I only met him when it was necessary. And even though we became very close, we were almost identical in our thought processes at some point um, and because of our th philanthropist side but we were very opposite on our spiritual side he had a, a belief system that was not like mine we both had the same God but had different responses to him and different thoughts about him so there you have it. All right. I just want, uh, I, I, I would like to move to the next speaker and I would like to invite you. Oh, first question, uh, do, do, who, who, who else, which people should I invite for the interviews like that? Um, who would, uh, which spirits or the aliens or the um, consciousnesses would you recommend that I would speak to and to meet? Hmm. Let me, th I would have to, uh, what is her name? Indira Gandhi. Oh, wow. Thank you. I'll, she, I'll was, start, but... she was one of the few uh, humans that had an alien walk-in. Oh, wow. I will research that and I will speak to you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, yeah, I would... Go ahead. She was a, a, said to be the Iron Lady. And it was because she had a walk-in at the right time from an alien species that made her great. Uh-huh. I did not Fascinate. know that until after I came here. But you will learn about that, I'm sure. Fascinating. Yeah, I also wanted to comment that you had an exceptional ability to establish relationships with uh, outstanding people through writing, and letters, and you met them, you traveled, and you established an amazing number of long-lasting long friendships. Well, when you meet me, when you met me on Earth, I was very genuine. I, I did not put on airs. I did not uh, pretend to be someone that I was not. I genuinely... Uh, usually genuinely really cared for the person that I was meeting. And so therefore, I have to say, I was, that's probably why. It's because I would be honest 
I was not usually honest in a critical way, but I could be. But I, I was very much upfront and loving as much as possible. And with that, I brought my joy, my sense of humor, my innocence to the relationship. And, oh, let's just face it, that, they can't stand it. They love that. They love my innocence. They love my joy. They love my humor. Yeah, you were charming. Yep. And you're charming now. I'm a charming person, but not to pat myself on the back. I had my problems too, but I was genuine with each person that I met. Right. Was there any special design in that? Like what, how did it happen? Did you did you did the God help to you? Like was you were is it because of your future achievements that fed the energy in your relationships? before that how did it come what's the physics of that the physics of my relationships no the physics of you got lots of extra energy oh yes relationships how did it happen well i i i thought that my diet was giving me extra energy but i found that it was from god in many cases because um my extra energy could not be maintained by the diet that i had Looking back on it, from this uh, angle, it had to be God and had to be the energy of the joy and positivity that was sustaining me because I was, even though many things befell me and were not successful, I still maintained a positive attitude and positive uh, direction no matter what. Thank you. Um, for the end, would you like to give a blessing to the public? A blessing. Um, I will. Um, yes. All right. I can give a blessing, I guess. <laughs> Dear God, Allah, all the names that you possess. I'm giving the ones that are most common for this group. I thank you and praise you for all that you have done, how you've helped me to open my eyes if from one dimension to another. Remember, to help those that are working diligently to have the success that they desire, to have the, the success that is necessary for the world to continue in a most positive way. Remember to rise those up that are willing to be leaders and let those be followers that cannot lead. Remember, Lord, to bring unconditional love as much as possible to this planet, for that is so necessary in this day and age with all the different things that are going on down there. I praise you and thank you for your guidance, for the mysteries of the Spirit as well. For you are giving great understanding to those that are listening and obeying. And it is a mystery to those that cannot hear. Praise you and thank you once again for my life and for all the things that I learned in the third dimension. And praise you and thank you for all those that learn and are learning in the third dimension. Be with Max as he moves forward in his mission. Help him to get through those negative times more easily and to Branch out as he needs to do for the good of the world. Many thanks, many thanks. Allah be praised and many others that take on your name. Thank you. You are welcome. Uh, could you invite Neem Karali Baba if he's available? <laughs> yes.
Yes, I will. Have a good day. Good day. Thank you much. Nimbulimbaba. <laughs> Welcome. One moment, please. You know it's me, you know. <laughs> okay, here I am. Welcome, Baba. Thank you for coming. Oh, it's a pleasure. Yes. Last time uh, we spoke, you gave us a wonderful blessing, and I, I listened to it several times, and only after several times it, it kind of reached me, and also it reached me only partly. It's a, it's a very, uh, how do you say, multi-layered. It's very, very multi-layered, very mm, deep thing. It's a deep message because you needed some deep thought at that time. Yes. And listening to it more than once brings it into many different th thought patterns. And uh, bringing it into all these thought patterns makes you want to think about it even more. <laughs> Thank you. So I have a good, good news. Uh, so Kitty Newman is now in India, and she said that the, uh, that the news are that you are back in the body. Ah. Yes, I am back in a body, but I have come over for you just to say hello and to bring about the knowledge and inspiration that's necessary for the day. Why would I miss such an opportunity? <laughs> Wonderful. Welcome. Thank you for coming and uh, welcome, <laughs> welcome back to Earth. So I, uh, why did you come? Why did you come this time? So what's your mission this, these days? Oh, yes, the mission this time is very easy. There is so much light that needs to be given to the world. So much information, so much enlightenment to be given to the world about God and about the way that man interacts with mankind is, is mm, so needed. People are, have become solo entities in this particular world. Families don't matter as much, and, and things have, they are closed off to many of uh, the things that need to be, they mean need to be giving to the world. They are only things that are close to them matters, and they need to be looking uh, with greater vision at the world, and giving the world mm -mm, greater love and understanding instead of looking at the nasty news and saying that, oh, everything's bad, everything's destruction, everything's negative. So therefore, we have to get in our hearts a positive thought process and let people know that we can help one another. I see this happening many times during disasters. And that is why disasters will continue, is because it brings the humanity closer together. There are the heroes that rise up. There are those that have great love for humanity that they never knew they had because it was kept within them. But now they see others suffering, and so they will run to their side and help them with all of their ability. I think this is beautiful. Mm. So when you... Um one of the questions we have, like, I think it's one of the key questions, uh, Ram Das brings it up a lot. Uh, when you did your miracles, um, how conscious you were of what you're doing? Like, uh, were you, when you see the future or see, read somebody else's mind, are you aware of it? Is it, uh, is your intellectual part, is, was it uh, involved? Or was it just happening because of, God spoke through you. Well, let me put it this way. I was aware of it, but I was, and I was aware that it was God. I was aware of it, but I was not taking credit for it. I was not. I was saying, oh God, is this another miracle? Thank you. And if it is, let it happen for the good of, the, for the good of mankind and for the good of others. So instead of taking the credit, I would let it flow out. I would let the miracle happen because God wanted it for them and because it was. 
for God that they are getting this blessing and miracle. I am so happy for it. And so I let it go. I let it happen. I let it be what it is. And the miracles happen. And I say, thank you, God. And they say, oh, thank you. Oh, it's you. And not me. No. If it were me, I would be very conceited and I would rise up and say, look at me. It's all me. It's not me. And so, therefore, I let it happen. And God saw that I was humble at that time and that he would allow, allow it to come through because he knew my head would not swell. Yeah, that's, uh, I guess the key question is uh, how much of ego is healthy? Um, ego is healthy. But... Ego is healthy when you find yourself. When you find the true self and know the true self, that is the ego that is healthy. When the ego starts to put itself on others, that is unhealthy. What I am saying is this. When you realize who you are, when you are the true understanding that you are who you are supposed to be, and all that information is coming to you about who you are, that is wonderful. But if you start saying, ha ha, look at me, and saying to others, oh, I am better than you because of I have all these gifts and you don't, that is when the ego is, uh, needs to be beaten down. Yeah, you, like one of the qualities of yours, which uh, Ram Das and Krishna Das mentioned, are that you were very selfless. You were playing for others without actually being interested in, interested in anything for your own sake. And, yeah, yes. and uh, I, I find it's difficult for uh, my purposes. I need to achieve something, not only to be, but uh, I, I have a mission and a purpose. And uh, to achieve that, I need uh, basically to focus on my ego, to be taken care of ego and uh, making decisions, which is uh, maybe not that pleasant, but I guess it's uh, a tool for achieving things. Well, I was in a wonderful place. I could be selfless as much as I want, and I still had very much support. I had the support of all those around me, and I could be selfless to a fault, and it was still, I had leftover, uh, I had leftover uh, abundance because people would give me and, and donate to me all the things that I needed for my survival. But yes, I, it was not that I wanted these things, and that is not why I did what I did, but I wanted to help and to bring this great thought process to them that um, God is love and that if he is a giver and not a taker, in many, many cases. He will not ask for much. Really, he doesn't. But he gives a great deal. After you left your body, uh, th uh, there was someone channeling you in, uh, I think, in New York City, and that's why Ram Das moved to New York City and lived there for uh, maybe three years, uh, trying to reconnect to you through these channelings. And then he got disappointed and left. So was it really you or how much of you were, were, were there in this channeling? At first it was me. Uh -huh. But then they got a popular, they got very popular, and they started to bring in themselves. Because they learned so much from me, from channeling me, that they decided that they really didn't need to come in, me to come in. They knew me. So they started saying things that they knew that I would say, but when that happens, when that happens, it comes out insincere. Uh-huh. So there you have it. It's, 
it, they become disillusioned because they think they know better than, than I do and better than God does. And they think they can do it better. So, but they cannot do it better because it shows people can see the truth. People see, uh-huh. the, people see the truth. If it's not me, they'll see it. I see. Uh, have you met dragons? How much are you connected to dragon energy? Dragon energy? Um, well, I have met dragons, of course, but they were not in dragon form. I asked them to change form so they could speak to me. Uh, but I have spoken to many dragons, and they are fine. Their energy is very much like mine, especially the Ascended Masters ones, and the, mm-hmm. those that have found enlightenment. Enlightenment is very much the same everywhere. So yes, I have met them. Are you frozen? I think you are frozen. <laughs> That's what I feel, yeah. So I, have you been in a dragon in one of your lives? Hello, hello. So have yeah. you been a dragon in your lives? No, I have never been a dragon. Um, Perhaps one day when I feel like being a dragon, maybe I will be, but I have really never really wanted that uh, life and I don't have to have it if I don't want to. Uh huh. So a part of your uh, essence was to be a joker, right? A joker, uh, <laughs> uh, a trickster, a trickster and to challenge people. And for that, you have to be in peace with negativity and to be able actually to hurt people for their benefit. Ah, but there is many things that you can learn from being a trickster, a jokester. It's not necessarily negative. If it teaches a a positive lesson, you you may say, ah, it has detracted their attention to a different place, yes. But in order to do that, you must have great positivity on your side because you may move uh, prisoners that do not belong in the prison away from the prison by distracting, but not by negativity. (laughs) So there are many ways to look at it. I was not one, I was not working with negativity to do it. I did do some pranks, yes. (laughs) But, um, and some of them were funny and some of them, uh, did uh, cause a little bit of hmm, a thought, but it was a momentary negativity and a greater world of positivity afterwards. Right, right. But it takes a, it takes some sharpness of character, strength of character, to be able to do that. Well, I do not say that I was very sharp in character, but I guess I had my ways. Uh, there was a legend that you were bilocated, that you were uh, at the same time in many places. Is it true? I could do that, yes. O- only with God's help. Uh huh. The reason for bilocation is that someone needs you somewhere else and you are not close by. Perhaps, um, let me give you an example. There was a lady in a village. She was on her deathbed. She had no family around her, but she was calling me and calling me because she knew that I would bless her before she died. Mm -hmm. And so there I went to her, I bilocated to her. She could see me, she could hear me. She could understand what I was saying, and I gave her the final blessing so that she would be comforted in that last moment before she passed on to the next world. And I say, God knew that that needed to happen. And when I I felt that tug at me that I was leaving my body, at least part of me was, I said, for God, I will let it happen. And I was able to see that lady and her joy at that last moment when she took her final breaths, knowing that she had been blessed and that she was not alone in that final moment. Mm -hmm. And then also after your 
after the leaving the body, did you reappear in your body on the on the planet? Um, yes. Uh huh. It is possible to do these things with the help of God. Uh huh. Ah, and they thought it was a trick. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. At first, they thought it was a trick. I thought it was very funny. <laughs> um, so in Indian culture, there is uh, no special place for angels, but uh, in um, you know, I, I talk to them and uh, in here in the West, the angels are big. How, can you explain that? Well, now I know about angels. Angels are not, to have a great spiritual life, you do not have to have angels in it. But they are very wonderful beings. And to me, it was like meeting aliens because I had never met them before or never knew of them before really until I met them. And so at that point, I was saying, ah, oh, this is wonderful. I, and so you work with the earth. Oh, that is beautiful. I think it's a wonderful thing. Just because I didn't know or didn't call on angels, that does not mean that they were not important and they are not important today. They are. They're, even, they're actually in, in this culture much more than you think at this time. They are making a strong comeback. Uh, so you met them only after coming to the spirit, after leaving the body? Yes, there was no need for me to meet them before. I mean, I mean, I met them before I came to this body, uh, the, the body anyway, but I did not remember them during this lifetime. The thing is, when I went back to the Oversoul, I remembered them again, and it was like, oh, yes, I just did not need them for the, the role I played in that particular lifetime. And although they might have helped me here and there with some things, I might, uh -huh. not, I might not have known it. I did not know it. Oh, I see. So uh, do you have anything to add about Lucifer? Yes. What? Well, he is. Do you have any? Well, you are breaking up very badly right now, so I, I'm Certain not sure. Certain experiences? Ah, experiences with Lucifer. You broke up. I could not hear what you said. Yes. Uh, I have experiences with Lucifer. Do you know I I met him, yes. Uh-huh. I do. We did not, um, we did not talk very long. He has a different philosophy of how things should be than I do. But I, I saw that he definitely has a purpose. And um, so be it. Let him do it. Mm -hmm. So but what I, is a... uh, He's not one of my best friends right now. But I don't need that right now. But um, I, I respect what he is doing. And um, I will let him do that. And um, But for now, I would rather to be with positive realms and doing things of, of, of only good and positivity. Uh-huh. Um. Uh. So, um, just a second. Do you, um, who, who should you think uh, I, I should meet uh, through Jim, like through channeling of Jim? Who should I invite for, for more uh, conversations? Oh, there is so many out there that would be very helpful for, for many different reasons. Are you looking for a spiritual leader? Uh, I'm open to different suggestions. No, no restrictions. Well... The one called Martin Luther King huh. Jr. He is so amazing to me. What he went through in his life on your planet is, is sad but beautiful in many ways. Mm -hmm. And he made such a difference. I, I like him a lot. He, he uh, strikes me as very genuine and beautiful. And 
I liked him a lot. We talk every now and then, and yes, and all the other babas that there are. <laughs> <laughs> Any particular you would like to recommend? No, just all of them are good. I would not want to pick one over the other. They would, they would be going, why didn't you pick me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually, I, I listened to Martin Luther King today and yesterday, his speeches. Uh huh. And so perhaps that's why I pulled that out of your brain a little bit. Uh huh. He is amazing, um, don't you think? Also, I think that um, um, some of those, uh, the popes from the, the distant past, might be interesting for you to speak to. They weren't all that loving and good, many of them, and they were in it for very bad reasons. But now that they are in the oversoul, much different. So which one would you recommend? Um, hmm, that's a good question. I would say uh, uh, the ninth one, the Pope nine, number nine. All right, thank you. I also had a, a wonderful experience with uh, Amma, uh, a female guru who travels the world and uh, a friend recommended that I meet her and she's, uh, she was in Los Angeles and I met her and uh, she hugged me, she heals by hugging and uh, I started crying and there was a wonderful release, like I cried for maybe the next uh, big time and then uh, uh, that was a big release and also it happened to you many times that people come to you and you do something and then they start crying. Of Can course. you comment? On, on the physics of that, what is actually happen, happening? The physics are this. They come into contact with the Spirit of God. The true Spirit is there, and it strikes something within them. It makes them, it, it starts to cleanse them and make them whole again, and they weep out much of the, of the negativity that they were holding in. They are cleansed after they have, have uh, started to weep this out. The Spirit of God has cleansed them because they have come in contact with it. Is that how uh, you... Yes, I, I, of, of course, yes. Well, uh, also, there was a yeah. similar question, um, also some sort of a miracle which is very, very mechanically ex obviously expressed. There was a, uh, uh, Yogananda speaks about it. When uh, a master, a Baba, uh, a guru taps on the heart and the person gets in a, some spiritual state where uh, the person unites with, the, with everything around with the universe. Yes, but they have to be ready for that. That is not ah. something you could do with everyone. Uh huh. But there are those that you know. Oh, it's a wonderful thing. I would like to experience it from both sides. I want to receive it and I want to be able to give it. But it is something that is very special. That when you are ready for it and someone does this for you, you will experience a great enlightenment. You will experience the, the universe coming to you and letting you know all the love that is there. You will feel a great excitement about it, yes. And to be able to do it is to not know what is happening with them because it is a unique experience for them. Your experience will be different than anyone else's. <laughs> You're close to God, so <laughs> I would like to pass my uh, gratitude. There is uh, lots of miracles happening in the last few days and maybe couple of weeks are just amazing what what is happening lots of lots of help arrived uh when it was needed and i was able to recognize that it was a pure miracle so i'm just really help, happy with it the help a miracle. when you are given over to god's love when you know that he is working for you will he not continue to give you the miracles that you need yes he will give them to you and he will be happy to do it yeah, I, I received so much help. Thank you. Um, and, yes. 
I would like to also one one thing I'm working now, like hard work, is a uh, child uh, bringing up children, uh, working with difficult children and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, can you, for the closing, can you give us a gen general blessing and maybe on the topics which I touched? Oh my, there was many topics. Yeah, children is an. Uh, Number one, how do you remain positive while there is a, a lot of negativity remember, with the child? Remember that children are people too. But they are special people because they don't know everything that you know. <laughs> but they think they do. <laughs> uh -huh. So I will give you a blessing. Thank you. Oh my God. There is so much that we do not know about the universe and about you and about love and about children and about the way that life goes on. There are so many mysteries in the life of a human being. Bring some light to this so that we may open up the hearts of the children to know that they are loved and that the guidance that they need it's not just from their parents, but from you and from all your eternal wisdoms. We know that children have their own world that they live in. And sometimes it is, it's too absorbent and they're absorbed so much they cannot see the truth about how life is. Let them know that there is somewhere outside of this world, that there is love also coming in. There is love to be had from those that are around and from God. Help us to notify our children that God exists in one way or another. And then miracles are possible when they know that God exists if you let them know what God can do. Many blessings to all those around the world. You are loved and there are many of you that need to stand up and need to declare the love of God so that he may work in you in a greater way, so that he may work in you in the ways that he wants not just the way that you want. I could pray all day long, and I do sometimes. But let me cut it short because I want to say, I love thee, O oh God, and all that is yours, and all that you give, and all that we understand of you, and all that is poured out upon us in the words and in the wisdoms of many. Show us the right lights so that we may be in the brightness of your love. Amen. Thank you.